It is Tuesday night. Welcome, guys. This is Weekly Life Training inside of ATM Business for Beginners. I am your host, Paul Alex, founder of ATMtogether.com. I'm here with my co-host. What's up, guys? Juan Geronimo, CEO of ATMtogether.com. Guys, it's great to be back with you guys again. Guys, this is Juan's very first official weekly live inside of ATM Business for Beginners. As you guys know, Juan was a mentor for the past two years. He started with ATM Together launched his ATM business in Texas and was able to scale to 25 ATMs, making them financially free. From there, he actually launched a digital program himself, guys, and he was actually successful on it. And he just took a break. He took a break because he has two wonderful kids, you know, the, the family, all that jazz. And he was just like, dude, it's time. It's time for me to come back. And I was just like, hey, bro, you like, I'm, I'm busy enough, man. Like I got three businesses, I got to run and I got family and I got all this stuff. I was like, you do you want to be like the face of ATM together? He was just like, sure. So <laughs> that's how it worked out, guys. Your network is your net worth, okay, guys? So <laughs> I was just like, here is when the mentee comes the mentor, right? And literally, he is. So guys, um, I'm super excited for this training because we have been getting so much feedback regarding um, the new program that's actually launching uh, this week. It's called ATM CEO. And uh, this is actually a program that Juan Geronimo launched. Um, he wanted to bring something special to the table, guys, for ATM deployers out there that want to start, but they don't have that much capital to start out with. I mean, we've all been there, guys. Um, and then with that being said, Juan, you want to go ahead and tell them about the lessons that we have for this live training? Yes, sir. All right, everybody. Today, we're going to not only go over the basics, of course, on the ATM business, how to get started from A to Z. But we're also going to be talking about BTMs, guys. We're going to be talking about the BTMs, Bitcoin machines. For those of you guys that are interested in that, there's a whole lot of information that you guys have or, or have coming your way in this live training, guys. Um, we got some special guests jumping onto the night's live training for you guys. Um, of course, you guys may or may not know them, but don't worry, guys, you're going to get to know them tonight. So Juan, go ahead and take it away, brother. All right, everybody. Welcome, guys, to another live training. I'm here to help you guys out with ATMs and ultimately generate another source of passive income, guys. Now, before we get started, for everyone that does not know me, I want to go ahead and give you guys a quick intro on myself, how I got started with the ATM business, and ultimately what qualifies me to help you get started with your ATM business. Now, let's go ahead and um, go back all the way up to five years. Five years ago, guys, I was coming straight from the oil fields of West Texas. I was out there working nonstop, night, literally, uh, we call it a nine to five, but in all reality out there, you're working up to like 20 hours a day, guys. Yes, my longest day of working out there was 21 hours um, to the point where I was just losing sleep, losing sleep, losing sleep. And eventually I had a life changing experience out there, guys, which made me realize that working out there, trading my time for money was definitely not the route that I wanted to go. So what actually happened out there, you guys may ask. Well, um, I was out there in the oil fields of West Texas. And like I said, guys, we're working long hours. Well, it turned out that we had to go into work at around 3 a.m., guys. And um, I was driving to location when I, I ended up falling asleep behind the wheel. So I was driving my truck with a trailer in the back. And, you know, little did I know I was rumbling and I wake up and I'm, I'm driving on the grass on the side of the road, driving straight to a, a, a light post. And um, this is where I swerved onto, you know, upcoming traffic. Thankfully, there wasn't no upcoming traffic. And um, that very moment right there, guys, was what made me realize, like, you know what? This is not more important than my family back home, right? That was a life-changing experience that, you know, it could have been death, right? I've heard tons of stories out there in the oil fields that, um, you know, it, it turned into a tragedy where some people didn't make it out of life. And uh, that's very unfortunate. And that right there is what decide, what made me decide, you know what, all this money that I'm working out here for, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to go ahead and put it to work so that I can now spend time with my family. I can now do the things that I love, spend as much time as I can with my family, you know, be happy, be stress-free. So that's what ultimately got me started with my ATM business, guys. Um, four years Four years um, back, this is probably a year uh, forward from 
me working in the oil fields is when I, you know, found out about the ATM business. Um, it was a very, you know, simple business to get started with. I um, was first looking in vending machines, but soon came to realize that, you know, buying merchandise like, you know, the Cokes and the chips and all that good stuff uh, wasn't going to be it for me. So I just decided to start with ATMs. Um, ATMs was very simple because like we just said, you know, it's as simple as opening up a business bank account. And I'll get into the steps in just a second. But it's just as simple as opening up a business bank account, buying an ATM, putting it on location, filling it up with anywhere near a thousand to two thousand dollars and just allowing your money to make you money. Um, it's that simple. Uh, so that's that's when I went ahead and, you know, went, went ahead and got, got started, guys. Um, started my company uh, four years later. I'm currently uh, generating twelve twelve thousand dollars a month in passive income just from my ATMs alone currently have over 25 ATMs here in Texas. And, you know, that's that's what I want to be able to show you guys how to do exactly that, right? Uh, Paul has tons of ATMs. Our processor, I'm sure you guys know him, Mike. That's the man right there. He has a ton of ATMs. And ultimately, it's just another way to generate passive income, to get us closer to financial freedom. So I want to be able to help you guys uh, through my journey, through my experience in the ATM business. Um, and get you guys closer to financial freedom, get you guys closer to start making your money work for you. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the first lesson for tonight's live training, which is the steps on getting started with your ATM business. So if any of you guys right now are on your phone or your laptop and you got a journal, go ahead and pull that journal out. And if you don't have a journal, guys, Pull out your tab on, on the, a separate tab on your computer and start jotting down some notes because I'm going to give you guys all the gems to get started with your ATM business here tonight. So let's go ahead and go over step number one, right? Forming your company. Now, when it comes to forming your company, guys, it is very important to set this up for your ATM business because whenever you start this business, number one, like we just talked about earlier, me and Paul, banks they are not playing when it comes to the ATMs, guys. They are not playing. As you guys heard, we just got a couple states back on track to start working with our ATM operators. And that's just because the ATM business within itself is a considered a high-risk business, right? So having an LLC in place, it's very important. Another reason why the LLC is very important is because, guys, be, building credibility for your ATM is number one, but also being able to protect you and your personal assets is another important thing. Number two, right? Uh, for example, let's say someone trips over your ATM and now they want to sue you. Well, this is where your LLC comes into play. Whenever someone trips over your ATM, let's say, God forbid that happens, now they want to sue you. Well, your LLC is going to actually protect you and your personal assets like your car, your house, your jewelry, whatever you have is protected because what they can only go after is what's under your LLC, which is your ATM machines, right? Um, that's probably not going to happen, but that's just an example on why it's important to have your LLC. Now, once you do create your LLC, you got your company formed and everything, you're ready for your EIN, which is an employer identification number. An employer identification number, in other words, it's just like your social security number for you, right? Is what is going to represent your business when these banks look you up, right? EIN would be your step number two. Once you got both of these ready to go, guys, you are now ready to go look for a business bank account. As you guys know, we just uh, got approved for more banks out in California, Florida, Texas, and many more other states here in the United States, and of course in Canada as well. So if you guys uh, need help with that, feel free to comment down below bank, and we'll go ahead and help you out by sending you a couple lists of ATM business friendly banks. Go ahead and comment bank down below. But banks, Step number three, guys, very important. You need a business bank account because whenever you receive transactions from your ATM machine, banks is how you're going to not only categorize all of your transactions, your profit and loss, your expenses, all that good stuff for tax purposes, but having a bank is very important because there's only certain banks that do work with the ATMs. You can't just go to Chase. You can't just go to Wells Fargo or Bank of America, which is the three big banks that we like to call the big three. Because they will shut you down the second they find out that you are in the ATM business. So it is very important to target the right banks. That way you can continue to scale your ATM business. Once you do find the right bank, 
for your ATM business. You're pretty much almost there. You're all, you're almost off to the races, guys. Last step, finding a location. Locations is key when it comes to the ATM business, as most of you guys probably know this, because that's how you generate income, right? That's how you start generating passive income. If you place a location that's not doing so well, then of course, it's not going to do very well for you or your income, right? So you want to go ahead and really do your research when it comes to prospecting locations for your ATM business. I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys a quick um top three locations for uh, how to prospect locations for my personal portfolio, door to door, automated leads and cold calling. This is by, by far the three best ways on how I like to find locations. Highly recommend you guys to give that a try. But when it comes to locations, guys, like I said, you want to be able to do your research when it comes to your locations. You don't want to place your ATM in a low traffic location or a location that is in a bad area like high theft, high crime. Uh, you want to place your ATM in a location where a lot of foot traffic, preferably cash only or cash preferred, right? Um, but most importantly, in a location that's nice, right? Um, at the end of the day, the great thing about the ATM business is that it is a floating, it is a floating asset, the ATM within itself. So even if you do happen to find a location and it doesn't work out very well, guess what? You can pull that ATM out and place it at another location. And that's one of my favorite things about the ATM business, that you can move from location to location until you actually find the right one. There's tons and tons of locations out there, guys that need an ATM or have a lot of traffic. And even by putting your ATM in there with that little bit of uh, the little percentage of the people that walk in there, use your ATM, it will still do enough so that you start generating passive income. But guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that quick lesson on getting started with the ATM business, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back over to Paul. Hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in just a sec. Man, gems. Gems on top of gems, guys. I love that. So, guys, <laughs> if you have any questions for Juan, I like to call him JJ, Juan Geronimo. I like to call him JJ. So, if you have any questions for JJ, go ahead and drop it down in the comments below. And we'll go ahead and answer the top three questions, okay? Go ahead and drop the top three questions down below, guys. And JJ will go ahead and answer them for you. Um, he's how long have you been in the game now, man? It's been uh, like four, four years, years now. now. Yes. Yeah, over 40 20, years now, guys. 2020 to be exact. Yeah. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He knows how to prospect. He knows how to market. He knows how to go on, like, uh, run ads on Facebook. It's, it's wonderful. Okay. Let's go with, all right, Hugo Gonzalez. What are your thoughts on placing an ATM at a hotel or gentleman's club? Which one would you pick, Juan? So from my experience, um, Gentleman's Club have, have definitely been my uh, most uh, income type of location, the most profitable locations. Um, just because when it comes to Gentleman's Clubs, guys, um, even bars, for example, you can raise up that fee. You can raise up that fee and uh, charge up to like $10. I actually had a Gentleman's Club that I just pulled out because they ended up going out of business. But when they were in business, guys, I was charging $10. And out of those $10, guys, even if even if 10 people used an ATM that day, that's 100 bucks that you already, you already generated just from a gentleman's club. So one of my favorite things about the gentleman's club, you could always raise up the fee and make your profit a lot quicker with less transactions. Um, hotels, hotels are great. Hotels are great just because there's a lot of traffic that go through hotels um, on a daily basis. I mean, depending on the size of the hotel, you can see thousands and thousands of people walk through that lobby. Um, so hotels can, are definitely great locations. Um, guys, there's a lot of businesses out there that have credit card machines where every now and then their Wi-Fi goes down. So then their POS system goes down. And if that happens, guess what? Your ATM is there to save the day. Um, what another reason why, and we'll get into this later on uh, down the line, but another reason why we, we recommend you provide your own internet because whenever their internet does go out, and it happens a lot, guys, trust me, um, I've experienced this myself with ATMs that I've had in the past where I would place it, use the business's internet, 
their internet goes down, their POS system goes down, and guess what? My ATM also goes down because I'm using their internet. So this is where I transition to providing everything 100% all on my own because when their internet does go down, your ATM is there to save the day. You don't have to worry about it going out of service. This is where your, your ATM transactions start to boom, guys. So um, both locations, I love them. Um, have no problems with it. Of course, uh, the Gentleman's Club, for those of you guys, I mean, uh, uh, my wife, for example, she hates every time I would, I would go over there and fill it up. So if any of you guys have a lady out there that wouldn't be happy with it, definitely hotels uh, is a great way to go. Um, let's see. Let's let's look at another location. <laughs> hey, 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 Juan. So we have Kino, uh, Eva, Calm, Kenny. Okay. And they ask, is this really live? So, so Juan, how can we prove that this is really live? Hey, down in the comments right now, let me know what you want me to do. You want me to wave? You want me to thumbs up? What you want me to do? I'll go ahead and do it, guys. This is 100% live. This, this is the thing about me and Paul. We don't play around here, guys. We do these lives live on the spot. Yeah. And this is exactly why we're doing this Q&A, right? We're doing this yeah. Q&A so that you guys see that it's live. And we can help you guys out, in per not in person, but virtually, right? You ask your question, we'll help you out. 100 percent exactly exactly we live live yeah so yeah. all right one last question and then we're gonna go and um talk to dustin dustin dustin's gonna bring some major knowledge with btms and it's gonna be awesome so let me pick the last question before we have to go guys because we're running out of time here but let me pick a good one okay this is a phenomenal one i okay. love this question let I'm, I'm gonna have you take a stab at this and then i'll go ahead and take a stab okay. at this as well okay gotcha. All right. As easy as it is, uh, I'm assuming for, for anyone to do this, why would someone, we're talking about the business owners, why would someone choose to work with me or and my ATM business instead of doing it themselves? So no, why no, would no. anybody work? With, why would anybody work with you, Juan? All right, let's 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 help the folks out here. So I'm going to poke at this question in, in two different ways because I've actually experienced this myself within my business. Um, number one, guys, having an ATM inside of a business is a convenience to them, right? It's a convenience. Um, that's why we call the surcharge fee another way, which is a convenience fee, right? Um, so it's a convenience for the business. Now, although the business owner can place their own ATM there, um, like we just talked about, guys, Dealing with banks and, you know, withdrawing cash and filling up your ATM and all that jazz is not the easiest, right? Um, the business owner themselves have to deal with their business as it is, dealing with customers, dealing with payroll, dealing with all the all the things that they deal with when it comes to a business that trying to, you know, go to the bank every other day to withdraw cash and fill up their ATM and program their ATM and install their ATM. All of that to them sounds like something they don't want to do, right? So... This is why it's um, why why they would choose you to put your ATM in there compared to them just placing their own. So that's one of the reasons. Um, like I said, guys, I've actually experienced this myself. I have a currently a bazaar um, here in my local area, and this bazaar they reached out to me through Facebook. Um, the reason why is because I post ads on Facebook and on and marketing my ATM business and everything. Um, quick gym for you guys out there watching right now, but. Um, they reached out to me on Facebook and they were like, hey, um, can you come install your ATM inside of my bazaar? And I was like, sure, you know, what's the address? I'll, I'll shoot. Uh, I'll head over there and I'll meet you, um, meet you and, you know, go over details. Well, I show up and they already have an ATM. I'm like, hold on. There's an ATM here. Is there is there a, a problem with it? Is there a reason why you want me to place my ATM? She was like, well, I actually own that ATM, but. I don't like going to the bank and withdrawing cash and walking around with cash um, in my, in, you know, in hand and, you know, having to come over here and fill it up and it runs out so fast. I, I hate just running back and forth. I, I rather have someone else deal with it and, you know, let you, you know, do your thing. And I was like, well, definitely I can, you know, I can definitely help you out. Are you, do you want to sell this ATM to me or you want me to just place my own? She was like, no, I, I want you to place your own. Um, I think I'm going to use this ATM elsewhere or sell it elsewhere. I don't know what she told me exactly, but long story short, she didn't want to deal with that ATM anymore. She didn't want to deal with having to fill it up because number one, it runs out of money so fast. So she does have to fill it up constantly. Right. So she'd rather just have me fill up the ATM. So those are my two, uh, 
uh, answers to your question, Paul. I know you want to go ahead and you know poke in at this question. So go go. Yeah, ahead. man. Yeah, man. I mean, two great, phenomenal examples that Juan just gave you guys. But my number one reason why I tell people, people buy you guys. Okay, it's your personal brand. Whether you guys are doing it for the ATM industry, real estate, um, uh, uh, lash artist. Um, I mean, anything. You guys are selling yourself. That's just what it comes down to. So personal brand in 2024 is the biggest asset you guys can invest in yourself. And how do you invest in yourself? Self-educating yourself, guys. So whatever you want to be great at is self-educating yourself because no one can take your ideas. No one can take your vision. And ultimately, no one can take what is meant for you. Okay, so if you self educate yourself, guess what? Even if you were to lose your business today, you would still be able to build another business. Okay, so that's a gem. A lot of high performers know that. Guys, your network is your net worth. Okay, phenomenal question. All yeah. right, let's go ahead and move on to the second lesson, guys. So, me and Juan are going to be going back and forth with the questions and our special guest, Dustin who is the co-founder of btmmachines.com, guys. So we're going to do a phenomenal, phenomenal lesson. Dustin, you ready to rock? 